Hey, hi, and you already know hello. How are you doing? I hope you are fantastic. I'm doing well. It's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all my fellow Canadians, and I guess happy early Thanksgiving to you Americans and any other Thanksgiving havers, because I'm not going to remember to say that again. So happy Thanksgiving and happy day across the board. As we kick into another Kendama commentary, this one, as you can see, rocking the XL Dama. You may have seen like a quick little two minute video I threw together some of the tricks. Well, this is that session where I was going for all the different tricks, variety of simple to more complicated stuff, just trying it on the extra large Dama, seeing how it feels to play something like this because it's super new to me. And uh, I guess you'll kind of see that experimentation and progression in the background of this commentary. Aside from all of my thoughts on what it's like to play a big Dama like this and some recommendations I may have for it, I do have a couple other things I want to get into. Some Squid Game, I feel like I have to talk about it because it's one of those shows that, you know, everybody seems to be watching and raving about and I think my opinion might be a little bit uh, unique compared to others. So I'll talk a little bit about that. I'll get into, you know, some more Kendama related shapes that I feel like I've talked about before, but I'll talk about again, some more news with the channel. I feel like that's always coming up. And then a little bit about uh, kind of an AI project I'm working on, something that might be exciting and just something cool to talk about. As I suffer through school, I may as well bring it up to you guys. So enjoy the trick progression in the background and let me get into I guess the hot topic, not even hot anymore, I'm a little late to the Squid Game train, but uh, nonetheless, I, I, maybe there'll be spoilers, I'll kind of just talk about the show, I mean, if you haven't seen it already, you're probably not interested, and uh, I'll try to remember a timestamp at the bottom if you just want to jump ahead with the Squid Game stuff, but my opinion first, and most importantly, if you're a fellow English understander like myself, I must say you have to go subs over dubs, subtitles over the English dubbed version. I know it is a lot of effort to use one eye to read and one eye to watch, but watching the subtitled version was so much better. I saw a couple clips, like I, I watched it all with subtitles, and then like I saw a couple clips here and there of what the dubbed version was like, and oh, it was just, it's like night and day, the quality and enjoyment I think you can get out of it. I know, I know you think, oh, well, I get enjoyment if I can understand it, but like, I mean, the characters and their voices and their expressions, just bear with the subtitles. And I think first and foremost, almost for any kind of show, movie, whatever, if it's in a different language, just suffer through, I guess, reading if that's suffering to you. And I think you'll get a lot more out of the emotion of the story and a better overall watching experience. That's my first little tidbit. Subs over dubs, always. Now, aside from how the show is delivered, let's talk a little content. The games, the squid games, that portion of the show, I absolutely loved all the challenges and the dynamic that goes into them actually physically playing the games and strategizing and trying to win and not die. I loved all of that. As well, another huge plus before we get into some negatives, I loved the kind of sneaky reveal teasers that like creep through the way. Again, spoiler warning, I'm gonna say, but uh, like, the whole, if you go back and see all the ways that that old man was behaving throughout the games, I really love the way they tied all of that together. And, you know, there's hints along the way. He wasn't like locked to the tug of rope string, string, tug, tug, tug of rope string. Yeah, I did say that tug of war rope. He wasn't locked to and he, you know, wasn't even going to get picked for that partner marble game. And then, you know, they didn't show his head get blown off. And all those little details that kind of led up to the big reveal, I thought was great. Now, what did I not like as much? The VIPs, they they didn't do much for me. They didn't hit too well, as well as the reasoning behind the old man wanting to play the games, like, you know, rekindling his childhood and he can't feel anything anymore because he's just rich and powerful. Like, like it, it makes sense. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense, but it wasn't the heavy hitting Kabayamo that I really wanted it to be and the VIPs as well. It was kind of, that's where it kind of started falling off for me with those uh, creepy old men. But I guess they had to wrap it up somehow, enjoy the show as a whole, but uh, those are some points that fell off. Here's my take on the one last thing that just does not make sense, and that is the pink guys. I mean, they look great, and their music when they walk in the room and stuff is great, but here's what doesn't make sense. Okay, there's like, people are saying, oh, some of the people that got chosen for the games, they were contestants, and then, if they picked the pink paper, they'd be the pink guy. So, okay, so we're saying that the pink guys are just as clueless as everybody else, and they're in it for the money. Well, then I don't understand why did half the pink guy, well not half, why did like three of the pink guys 
want to sell organs? Like, what was the point of that? If they're pursuing this huge bag of money, then what do they need this extra side pocket money for? And if they really were pursuing some kind of money like everybody else, shouldn't a lot more of them be dying? I don't know. I just couldn't, you know, pull a lot of the strings of the pink guys together. As cool as they looked, they they didn't satisfy me. Maybe in a season two or something, we'll get like pink guy motive reveal and uh, I'd be really satisfied with that. But yeah, Squid Game overall, uh, now that it's spoiled, <laughs> I'd still watch it. Subs over dubs. And uh, let's, let's talk about this Dama. First and foremost, like always, I start off with a big blunt statement. The extra large shape is incredibly fun to play. And when I say incredibly fun to play, I mean it is like a change of pace. It's fun to experiment with. It feels like a whole new toy. I mean, some tricks are definitely easier, I will say, on the extra large Dama and some not so much. So take something like stalls. At some point in this video, I pull off a wing stall on like my first attempt, which with a regular sized Dama just does not happen for me. So things like that, you know, where you kind of rely on balance and control, the extra large Dama makes that a lot easier. So if it's like your dream to hit some, you know, some cool stalls or balance tricks, I really think an extra large Dama would help you both practice that and actually be able to hit it, even if you could never hit it on a standard size. Something I did not quite expect, even though it should be expected, it is like really heavy to play and I mean it doesn't even compare this extra large drama doesn't even compare to something like a kaiju I have no idea how people can hit tricks on those but after like a 15 20 minute session with this thing like my arm is like <laughs> I'm not I'm not a weak baby but <laughs> no like my arm is like starting to feel it it's like you know my wrist and fingertips it's a lot to carry around and play this dama in a heavy session so it's heavier than i expected and i feel like that really limits its like capability indoors which obviously i'm playing indoors and it it's just a bit less comfy it's like some tricks you know i tried the sweet special in here where you're swinging the string around like something like taps would just be a no-go with the heavy weight maybe it's just me like maybe those tricks are possible but the fact that it's so heavy and less comfortable makes me feel like, oh, when the Ken and the Tom are like smashed together, it's like this huge nuclear explosion because it's so heavy. And maybe that's kind of holding me back from doing tricks. But I do think, especially indoors, it is very limiting if you're trying to play this. And you might think, oh, it doesn't look that big. But I'm here to tell you, when you have it in hand and you're like beside your furniture, this thing really shows its girth pretending that I didn't just use the phrase shows its girth to talk about how big something is, I'm going to say the play style is very easy to transition into with a big Dama like this. You know, like if you're thinking like, oh, I don't want to get a big Kendama because I don't want to like have to, you know, learn how to do a bunch of new stuff again. I will say it's very easy to transition into. What's hard is kind of transitioning back to a standard shape after you play this a bunch. And if you played it at all, you'd understand what I mean when I say that. Easy to go from a standard shape to pick up and play the big shape because it's got more weight, more control. But once you go back, at least maybe for 10 or 15 minutes, I found it really hard to readjust back to like a standard shape. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen that meme. Uh, it's like a guy goes to pick up milk and it's like, oh, when you think the milk is full, but it's empty and he like just grabs the milk and it anticipates putting so much effort into picking it up because he thinks he's full. He thinks the milk carton is full and then he like lifts it right through the roof because it's because it's empty and it's light. <laughs> That's what it feels like to go back to the standard shape Kendama. Like I go to pull up the Tama and it would just like go flying because it's so much lighter compared. It's like the whole muscle memory thing. You know, you, you push your arm against the inside of the door frame for like 10 seconds. Then you walk forward and your muscle memory makes your arm go up. All that stuff kind of combines when you play the extra large Tama to just make going back to standard a bit more difficult. But yeah, so my overall opinion, if you want to give the extra large Dama a try, I mean, the only way you're going to really know is if you try it. But my overall opinion is it's great for training and, you know, practicing some of those balancing tricks, some of those stall tricks that you might not hit otherwise. It's good for training and it's very satisfying. I mean, like the spike hits with that weight, it, it hits different when you're hitting tricks on a big Dama. So it's very good for training, very satisfying. The downsides I'd say is it's less versatile because there's just some tricks you can't do with it. And it's a little less usable because indoors or with limited space, I just don't feel as comfortable using it for all the things that maybe I'd want to if I had like a, a ball pit under my feet. We can transition out of big kendamas into some other related big news. And that is that I 
managed to monetize my channel and get into the YouTube partner program the other day, which is, I mean, it's kind of that big exciting day where there's the potential there to profit and get something back out of your hobby and the thing you love doing. So that's really exciting for me. I guess this is my, my little moment to like be proud of myself. It's been like super fun making the Kendama videos and now even getting a, a tiny little kickback out of it. I'll even, I'll throw it up on screen just to, uh, I guess as a little memento, solid, I, I'm trying to remember it in my head, I'll throw up the screenshot, I think it was 81 cents first day, you know, that that's something, <laughs> and that's Canadian, so that's like 65 cents USD, and it's, you know, it's the coolest 65 cents I've ever earned, so it's fun to see, I mean, that number will climb a bit, and it, it'll just be fun, and it's, it's more motivation, obviously, it's kind of something I'm still learning is like the whole monetization deal. Like I just tick, 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 like set it up. However, I think I click the button that just lets YouTube put the ads wherever they think they should be. I don't know if that's a good idea, bad idea. Kind of got to figure that out still. So uh, I, I guess bear with me. Oh, I'm trying to avoid like, you know, just bombing you with like unskippable ads because I'm not trying to do that. I don't like watching those either. So I kind of got to figure it out. But if, if there's ads that are bothering you blame youtube because i i just click the button where they do it for me but i mean yeah of course i have you guys to thank for you know sticking around and watching the videos and i'm gonna reinvest that 81 cents or 65 us cents whatever currency you got i'm gonna reinvest it into you know buying new damas and showing off new things and it'll come full circle back around and i think it'll just be fun so I like to be transparent, keeping you, keeping me, I guess, open and honest to what's going on. And that's, that's the news. On the topic of you guys, the, the gang, the homies, <laughs> watching the videos and in the comments, I have a new Kendama shape. Well, not even really Kendama shape, but a new kendama like shape uh in the mail on route. Thanks to one of you guys, my man, Justin, Justin something some letters after that. <laughs> Anyways, you know who you are, Justin. You're in the comments and stuff. And he kind of tipped me off to a website he found that was selling the sweets rolling pin. And that is Kiki Kendama. It's like K-E-K-E -E Kendama. I don't know where they're located. I think somewhere in Europe, maybe Latvia or something. Anyways, he mentioned to me, like I said in the video, oh, I'd like to try a rolling pin one day. And my man came through. He's like, oh, here's a site where you can find it. Because like, I mean, sweets doesn't sell them anymore. And I didn't really put much effort <laughs> to be honest into looking for one, but you know, he brought it to my attention. I was like, oh, cool. And they were like at maybe 12 euros, I think. Plus of course the shipping, I got to bomb it over to Canada, but uh, not too bad. And now it's, I mean, I don't know if it's in the mail yet, but I mean, they're thinking about putting it in the mail soon. So stay tuned for that. That'll be exciting. I like trying the new shapes. Uh, you know, the, the XL was just a start. I'd like to try the pill one day. And I've just got tons of ideas for Kendama stuff, like more tests for the Frankenstein and unboxing new kind of toys and exposing you guys to new stuff. So I've got tons of ideas and it's it's really just the time and the, I guess, the lack of availability of effort that's holding me back right now. And you may be asking yourself, well, what does that even mean? <laughs> and uh, that's basically just the the schoolwork eating up all of my lifespan right now. And it's just a busy time. Final semester to wrap it up. I think they're, you know, making me really earn my degree. And I'm just really busy. So I'm kind of struggling to find that balance between making videos and, you know, actually doing the work I have to do, trying to maintain, you know, the marks and stuff. So it's, it's a kind of a process. If you can bear with me through it, uh, there's always lots of ideas come in and lots of things I want to do and share. So I guess I wanted to kind of mention on this topic of school, segue after segue, uh, kind of a cool assignment I'm working on just because I think it's interesting. I might want to hear it from past me one day and you might find it cool too. I'm working on uh, an artificial intelligence project where I have to build an AI to play Connect 4 against someone. So I mean that's pretty much the whole meat and potatoes of it right there. One class we're learning how to, you know, write algorithms and functions that will, you know, make decisions in board games. So in our case for the assignment, it's Connect 4, and I'm learning how to, you know, make a robot that's going to make a good choice in Connect 4 if you're playing against it. You know, how can it learn to cut you off and block your moves and stuff? It is pretty interesting stuff. And like that 
youtuber -y part of my mind was like oh i could make a video like me versus my brain and connect four but obviously that doesn't align with most of the hobby related kind of videos i make but it might be interesting to see so maybe i'll do it anyway i really just spit out onto the channel whatever i think is cool and interesting and maybe if this project doesn't put me into cardiac arrest i'll want to still talk about it to another day but yeah, I guess that is kind of a point to think about at least. Where is this channel destined in a year, five years, ten years? Who knows? I, I want to keep doing whatever I'm enjoying and putting it out because I've kind of fallen in love with just sharing the weird hobbies I do because I find people that are interested and that's really exciting. So, you know, maybe, maybe it'll be AI, maybe it'll be Kendama, who knows? But I do appreciate you being here for whatever it is. And if you made it this far into a Kendama commentary, obviously you're at least a little bit interested in me and what I have to say. So I do appreciate that. And uh, maybe you're interested in the Dama tricks that are going on in the background too. And that's perfectly fine with me <laughs> regardless. I do hope that you have a fantastic day. And with this quick little wrap up, hope you enjoyed. I will talk to you in the next it's kind of weird enunciation uh, uh, in the next video <laughs> talk to you later bye oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I cannot end with a bye okay talk to you in the next one peace